Hello fellow Hyroleans, I'm your guide, the Hyrule Historian, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for the Switch. Where today, we are going to be heading to the Tell Cave, the first dungeon, since in the last episode we got the key from the mysterious forest. However, I wish to show off this place first, since it's the main shop within the game, and it has one of the most interesting characters, or at least in my opinion. Hey, welcome! See something you like? Just bring it here. Straightforward, right? Now, if you really want to, you could actually be more of a thief within this Zelda game, since this is the first Zelda game that actually allowed you to pick up the item and bring it to the shopkeeper to show you what you want. However, if you're fast enough, you can actually leave. But, if not, and you mess around like I do, he will catch you very easy. Hey, you stop! You're gonna pay! Put it back! Very well, sir. Now, if you are actually able to steal it, which I don't recommend, you will get a surprise. As well, you will be known as a thief throughout the rest of the game. However, I'm not sure if that is the same way within this version. However, it's something for you to try, I guess, on your own time. But anyways, we don't really need any items from the shop right now, so we're gonna be heading to the Tail Cave while making our way past these Octoroks. It's a sad sound when you actually defeat one. There's a new look here, I can see, since it shows an instrument in front of the cave now that's normally not there. And I can see some crates on the other side with a very interesting sign. But then, with the googly-eyed key... We will now open the first dungeon, which leads to a nightmare. And the keyhole! It is gone. It took the googly eye key! I like that key. Why was I not able to keep it? But still, here we have it. The Tail Cave. Dungeon 1. What secrets will it hold? I, uh, the first secret... Besides death... Is Mario enemies. <laughs> And a key! A very, very shiny key. Just look at that glow. Now there is something that I kind of wanted to talk about since... Ooh. This isn't good. Already, um... We already have the compass. Okay. You got the compass! Now you can see where the chest and nightmare are hidden. This compass has a new feature. A tone will tell you if a key is nearby. Thank you. But what I was going to say is we are having <laughs> to do a bullet hell Zelda which if you don't know it's like I mentioned that within Link to the Past and we it's like when fire is shooting in every which direction and you just having a dodge hello beetle I mean you are a beetle but you're a beetle from Mario well the one main thing I was going to say is that in this Zelda we have a dungeon creator later on, and I would actually like to see what some of you create and see how well it is. Probably share it as a community. And sometime later, I may actually fix the googly eye dungeon, which, you know, that's really... It doesn't sound threatening in any way. <laughs> so, left or right, I forget. 
Actually, I'm gonna go left, and we already have some keys. Um, are you Stalthos? Wow. Um, okay. Those are Stalthos, I guess. Sure. <laughs> I mean, why not? For me, though, when it comes to Link's Awakening, it took so long for me to actually make it through these dungeons, but since I've known the original game, once I start playing, the map is directly in my head. It's like, I just remember all of this, like, instantly. Like, where to go and whatnot. However, this map, it looks more like something from Wind Waker or... Was it Spirit Tracks? I've only seen a little bit of Spirit Tracks. Spirit Tracks is one of the games I do not have. And also, this is one of the more interesting doors. Since it's a one-way door. Come on. I mean, that's one way to do it, I guess. Oh. So. Um... Hi, friend! This isn't going to end well. I can see it. I think we have, like, a piece of heart left. <laughs> However, we just collected a piece of power. Uh... So, yeah. Now, what's interesting about this is it's still, like, no screens scrolling. Which I'm so used to seeing, like, all of this just being one room, and then you scroll over to the other room. That's the one thing I'm having to get used to. And not attacking everything that's in front of me. I need hearts! I need bombs! Oh, that, that's a locked door. Okay. Thankfully, we have about three keys. Those are the bubbles, I think. Those, like, shock bubbles now. Shock bubbles! And a very familiar sight. It's an owl statue. The beakless statue is saying something. You can't make it out. Well, that sucks. Now these guys are a blast from the past. They're actually... I want to say they are originally from Link to the Past. I mean, they're pretty much the Spikies from Mario, but... And speaking of Mario... Face me, Goombas! Hi, Goomba. How are you? So, if you're not aware, if you actually jump on them like how Mario would, you will get a piece of heart. Or, I wish you would get a piece of heart, but you would get it health. But man, this is actually, even though this is so simple, the graphics, the updates, this just looks amazing right here. You would not get this within like the Game Boy Color like, the DX version and whatnot. I mean, it was still beautiful then, but, I mean, just how things are turning out, it's more, it's kind of hard to explain. It brings back a more of a nostalgia feeling to me, since I've played through the game multiple times before. Cool. 
Congratulations! You got the rock's feather. It feels like your body is a lot lighter. Honestly, even though it's a rock's feather, and if you don't know, a rock is a giant bird, myth a mythical bird that breathes fire, it also looks like a feather from Kazooie, from Benjo Kazooie, since I've been looking back at that. That was also a really classic game as well that I love, and it also looks like some, like the, the I want to say Phoenix Down, like, it's an item within the Final Fantasy world that I think it's also a feather. So, I'm going to equip this. I don't think we really need the powder as much, but Link is able to jump freely. Look at him. So excited. You know what? Another thing that I'm just thinking of, because you don't get many of these side view areas in Zelda games. I mean, it originally came in from Zelda 1, and then, I mean, it was all there in Zelda 2, like the Adventures of Link. However, I don't think many people still care for that, even though I, I, I still believe it has its charm. It's It has the feel to it, and I don't know, but it's like... Within newer games, and one thing that I can kind of mention is like Four Swords and, well, Four Swords Adventure to be exact, that it brings in some of the side view stuff and it brings in more of the graphic changes and I don't know, but there's just so much more to this and it's like this is kind of what it feels like to have an older more classic game brought to the modern times it brings that charm that games are missing these days you got the nightmare key now you can open the door to the nightmare lair that just sounds like something I don't want to open. I mean, opening the layer to the nightmare. Yeah. I would actually... And when I was talk, just talking about like the charm and stuff of the classic games, this actually feels like a game where you can go out and play and not really have to worry much about a story but the story is there if you want one and also this just has the more of the comedic feel to it and this is kind of what I talk about when the screen transition like it goes from this to this but it had to match up all of them and I think this is where you would get the beak for the statue because this is one of the more interesting items in Link's Awakening in case you ever get lost and you need extra hints for the dungeons You found a stone beak. Now to find a owl statue to fit it into. Like this one? Oh, um, his eyes are glowing. Uh, that's just creepy by itself. Turn aside the spined one with a shield. Um, okay. In other words, he's talking about the spikies, um... The things that where we got the rock's feather at. Oops. Still like the rock's feather. Ooh, I 
wonder. I don't know if this was much of a thing, but... Ah, this is gonna be fun. Hi, sir! Wow. You look more like a blob these days. Seriously? Wow. That is our first game over. Okay. I mean, thankfully, it doesn't take too long to get back there. You know, when they're not moving, it's actually kind of creepy. The Stalfos, I mean. Okay, round two. I know what I'm doing now. Um, I poked him in the butt, and he exploded. That's the best way to defeat an enemy, right? Poke him in the butt. Ooh, so shiny, so mystic, so mysterious. Um, sure. Yeah, it just makes the shortcut within the dungeon. I just didn't know what it would be like. But, anyways. You know what? When I say this, uh, Owl said the spiny ones. Yeah. But it is time. Time to face. Um, excuse me? What has happened to you? Hi, Mordorm! I mean, it, it, he is a whole new look! He, he's like a... In, about to say, he's like more of a plant Mordorm. And looking at the tile, I mean, that kind of shows it. Now, I wonder how many more hits I have to do to him. Um, I cannot keep up with the hearts. <laughs> so, I am not as good as I remember I was. <laughs> so, takes a little bit more practice. There we have it. We have finally defeated the plant Mordorm. And he explodes into purple flames. <gasps> Just what I needed. Now we can make these hearts stop beeping. You got a heart container. You will not die as much anymore. Now get going. Now if you're not aware... The more creepy side of Zelda. Yeah. I wonder who's been here before me. Come on, Link. This is also an interesting way where you can actually fight Mordorm over again. But because I picked up the heart container. Yeah, he doesn't show back up. So there's a little bit of advice for you. If you beat Mordorm, do not grab the heart container and drop down. You should be able to fight him again, if you feel like it. But there it is. I forget if that's supposed to be a violin or a cello. Because they had so many different types of instruments here. You got the full moon cello. Hey, I was right. It was a cello. However, when it comes to instruments, violin, cello, other things, um, sad to say, they sound about the same to me. Swamp. A path opens in the blooms.
Yay! We got the cello! Now we must head to the swamp? I mean, sure? But I feel like I'm about to end this episode off here, but before I do, we must talk with our fateful friend, which sadly I don't see anywhere. But since our friend's not here, we're going to talk to this mysterious owl who can actually speak to us. Woo! That is an instrument of the sirens. I have to admit, at first, I did not believe that you were real. How dare you? Must be a senile owl. He's getting fantasy mixed up with reality. However, he says that we're not real and he's an owl who can speak. Let's think about that for a moment. That instrument, along with the seven others in the set, has the power to wake the windfish. You must collect them all. I was instructed to give you directions. Your next goal is north in the gulpling swamp. Woo! Indeed. Okay, bye. I, I mean, I guess thanks for the directions. I mean, straightforward, go north. But yeah, anyways guys, thanks for watching. This has been the Hyrule Historian. And in the next episode, I guess we're going to the swamp. I mean, this is actually where the series kind of starts getting more serious. We've already messed around a good bit with Chuck and the others, so it's, it's time to move on. So this has been the Hyrule Historian. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a like or a comment below. And don't forget to ring the bell since it will keep you notified for any time I upload videos. And thanks for watching. And I will see you all within the next episode. Later, guys.